in the Ukrainian port city of Odessa, deep below the bustling squares and far from the tourists visiting the Potemkin stairs, lies a mysterious underground world where stone was mined for the city's grand buildings. This is one of a thousand known entrances to the Odessa catacombs. Equipped with a hard hat and flashlight, we make the 25-meter descent, led by guide Stanislav Galinovsky, who works for a local tour operator. So let's go. It's one of a half dozen companies offering eerie expeditions through this vast subterranean maze. Visitors are advised not to explore alone. Here you can see examples of the cuts that was made by souls in the 19th century. Digging began here in the early 1800s, when limestone was extracted as a cheap building material. Very beautiful stone, but it's brittle. If it will be dry, you can use it for building. Built on three levels, Odessa's catacombs are a chaotic web of unconnected caves and abandoned quarries. The air here is stale and damp. 80% of humidity. No sunlight and lower oxygen levels have helped preserve history. Centuries-old graffiti looks fresh. It's from the 19th century. You can say that it looks quite new. It's not process of oxidation, so it will last for longer time. You can see dates and names left by Soviet miners who converted parts of the catacombs into a nuclear bomb shelter during the Cold War. From left and right side, you can see the benches. This bunker for two weeks can sit around 1,200 people. If we go deeper, you can find the bunker where it can sit around 5,000 people. Gas masks and medical kits were stockpiled to fight radiation poisoning in the event of a nuclear attack. Theoretically, it must save your life or make it slightly longer. The further you walk, the further you travel into the past. This was Odessa. Every available minute was seized to turn it into a fortress. During World War II, the catacombs became a hideout for Soviet resistance fighters after Odessa fell to Nazi German troops and their Romanian allies in 1941. But each new gain is an empty triumph, so long as there are men left with the courage to fight on. From the tunnels, a local unit of the Soviet secret police, the NKVD, waged a sabotage campaign against the occupiers, reinforced by a second NKVD unit from Moscow. And they was always struggling for power. They cannot decide who will be totally chief. Living underground took a psychological toll, and the two groups turned on each other. Cabin fever, you know. And the Odessa group totally wiped the Moscow group. Like they shot them? They yes, shot. Them. Okay. One after one. Watch your head. Yes. It's just one of several grim tales Galinovsky likes to share. Your head, your head, your head, your head. And now... He's been a catacomb guide for more than four years, which might explain why he doesn't wear a helmet, unlike new visitors. You now understand why you need the helmet. Over the centuries, Galinovsky says Odessa's catacombs were used by criminal gangs, for stashing contraband. It's the place where this goods was stored. Or it was used by the bandits as a place as a hideout. With two and a half thousand kilometers of tunnels, Odessa's catacombs are two to three times bigger than those of Paris and Rome combined. The man who has mapped much of this sprawling labyrinth is geologist and university professor Konstantin Pronin. He has spent 50 years exploring Odessa's catacombs and has published a book about his discoveries, some of them gruesome. Bodies found in the catacombs were either victims of crime and conflict or were homeless people. In 2019, Pronin stumbled upon an underground base that he says was used by royalists during Russia's civil war a hundred years ago. Мы несомненно видим, что дело происходило в 20-21 году, что было достаточное количество вооруженных людей, 
Вот, ну понятно, что уже в то время боролись они против советской власти. But what Pronin spends most of his time doing is advising building developers in and around Odessa. Before a new construction project is started, a survey is done. Геологи занимаются тем, что определяют, есть они или нет катакомбы, вот. А потом горностроители их ликвидируют. Обычно это делается методом там по ножа гидрозабелом. То есть они заполняются водно-песчаной пульпой, вода фильтруется, песок в плотном теле остается и пустоты там уже нет. There is a surprisingly large amount of water flowing through the catacombs. Some of it comes from cracked water pipes, creating underground rain and small lakes. We can say it's a small experiment. Stanislav Galinovsky says he's introduced a half dozen Mexican cave fish and hopes they will breed. The main problem of this place is that there is no light at all. And the water there is highly mineralized, too much calcium. And so this fish can easily live in such harsh uh, surroundings. Just when you think you've seen it all, Galinovsky lights up a dark cave that has been converted into a makeshift bar. You want sweeter, harder. Homemade spirits are served. Budmo. Budmo. But what really makes your head spin is the realization that Odessa's vast catacombs could actually be far bigger. Konstantin Pronin estimates that less than half of all the tunnels have been discovered. Вот что касается, значит, э, сколько закартированы, сколько осталось белых пятен, ну, наверное, процентов 60 еще является белым пятном. That means this enchanting Ukrainian port city on the Black Sea could still hold many more subterranean secrets.